Okay, so last one today. Bank reporting now required. Dude, what are we... Holy goodness, what's going to happen? Are the banks... Are the banks up to something, or are they actually being held accountable? I'm confused. I feel like it could go either way. Anyways, let's look into it. So, this is going to be a very brief video. It, it's basically saying, okay, so look, this section here, 249.131, is green, meaning this was not here before. And I looked back, and actually a lot of these, they're adding on brand new parts to the, these rules. Now they're like, okay, well, we're going to add disclosure requirements. General, a covered depository institution holding company, U.S. Intermediate Holding Company, or covered non-bank company must publicly disclose information required by this subpart in format provided in Table 1 to this paragraph. Now, I know this is new, and I, I looked into all parts of this because, number one, if you looked at any historical versions, there are none. It says right here, the content you requested is not in the ECFR on 121.21. I, I looked back as far as 121 before the original run-up. The first date this content was available since then is 7-1-2021 and can be viewed here, which is this exact uh, change. So again, now finally requiring the banking sector to disclose what now? What? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. My PowerPoint just screwed up. Anyways, okay, so this is the form that they're talking about. Capital and securities, open maturity, less than, greater than six months, one, or greater than a year, perpetual, average weighted amount. So you got capital and securities, NSFR, regulatory capital elements, which we just went over in the last video, other capital elements and securities. Retail funding, that's scary. Why are they funding for with retail? Anyways, stable deposits, less stable deposits, that's terrifying. Sweet deposits, brokered, reciprocal deposits, and brokered deposits, okay? Other retail funding. That's vague. Wholesale funding. Okay. NSFR derivatives, liability amount. Total derivatives, li liability amount. Wow, I'm not drunk, I promise. All other liabilities not included in categories 1 through 13 of this table. That is awesome. Total ASF. Now, we went over ASF last video. Which I will link at the end of this one in case you missed it. RSF item. Um, total high quality liquid assets. Um, again, lots and lots of stuff on here. And then we got uh, loans. Loans to financial sector entities. Loans to financial sector entities secured by assets. Loans to wholesale customers or counterparties that are not financial sector entities. Of which, with a, with a risk weight no greater than 20%. With a, a risk weight no greater than 50%. They're like breaking down everything. And then you have all this new language added that they must follow. Because it's a rule, man. So maybe the reason they were, you know, not doing all of this stuff before is because it wasn't a rule yet. But now it's a rule. So uh, now they can be broken. Perfect. Anyways, I'll link this below. I'm not going to read this verbatim to you like, uh, you know, Mama Goose or whatever. Mother Goose. So I'll just, I'll just link this for you in the, in the uh, description. Um, get, let you get back to your 4th of July weekend. But again, the point of this video is they're now requiring the banking sector to disclose things. <laughs> A lot, I mean, good job that it took this long. Pathetic, really. But let's see what happens.